Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Proud of you, bro. Oh, bro. Bro. Oh, bro. Proud of you. Oh, bro. Yeah. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you. What are you proud of me for? I'll think of something. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah, there I'll think is. of something to be yeah. proud of you for. I could name a million things for you. You can't I'm name one thing for me sure that you're proud you of me can. for. I'm proud of you oh, for your Jade's. height. Yep. I'm proud of how tall you are. Okay. How you've maintained that throughout the years. Yep. It's not, that's not really going to change that much, you know? Pr- so proud, though. Thank you. you Thank know? you very much. reason I ask. It's one of your best accomplishments. Yeah. Uh, being this tall? Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you, Jesse. That means a lot to me. Um, yeah, you're welcome. The uh, reason I ask is uh, today was bullying day at the school for a child. And yes. They all had to wear a T-shirt uh, for bullying day, mm-hmm. uh, which is a cool thing. Yes, uni- Unity Day, and it is they wear wear orange to show that they're all united against uh, bullying. Yeah, yeah. Fun conversation last night was. So, what do I do to stop bullying? <laughs> You almost have to bully the bully to stop the bullying, which well, it gets a little tricky as a parent. Where you're yeah. like, ah. so I've always been a, I've always been a bully, and I shove nerds, right? Yes, and you know that. I, everyone knows that. Shove nerds, no. Uh, I was the opposite for sure. So, what do you say, right? I think we were both looking at each other, kind of like. Uh-huh. So I said, if you see someone hurting one of your friends or someone that's you know, not able to defend themselves, you go up to them. And what I wanted to say is, you know, you shove them. Yes. You bully them. Yeah. But I was like, oh, wait, no. I mean, you tell them, hey, you go pick on somebody your own size, size. which is very old, old fashioned. Old I do fashioned. want him to talk a little bit like a like an old timey sheriff. Right. I want him to be you more do, like yeah. tombstone yeah. when he talks to them is like. Yeah. What's the what's the. What's the quote? Law don't go around yeah, here. Yeah, Law yeah, dog yeah. savvy. Yes. And it's like, hey. Yeah. So I well, kind of I mean, taught him a lot of those little like, you little, know, beat it, beat it, nerd. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Is it weird that I think the world needs bullies? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the. Uh, that's the hardest part for me. That's the argument. You know, the Bilbers and the, you know, the old school guys that are like, listen, dude, like, that's just how it fucking goes. Yeah. And survival of the fittest and things like this. Uh, so that's the question is like we as a society and the young, the youth uh, just can't handle fucking shit anymore. I know. And that's across the board. Right. It's so a, it's a, and, a, and it's a problem, I think. So do you remember yeah, do any, you ever bullied as a kid? Um. No, I, I don't remember being bullied. I mean, I know I had like beef, some beef with bitches, but like, right, it was mutual. Not, not any fist fights or. Um, I've definitely, yeah, yeah, I've definitely gotten in a fist fight. So I remember, I think it was either late kindergarten, early first grade, right? We rode the bus. Uh, there was a bully who was probably fourth or fifth grade on this bus mm. and like every day he would threaten to beat someone up right on the bus sure so you were kind of that was just, his job right and you were trying to avoid him to uh get a, you know get away from the situation or whatever or you know when the bus stopped you sprinted home mm-hmm. and that was kind of the thing of like oh all right it at a very early age it taught you survival Holistic instincts, right? Right. Um, even though he was like four years older than me. Sure. I know what you're saying. Hey, Ross, why don't you knock, this, knock him out? Couldn't. He's four years older than me. And that, at that age, it's a big difference. It's a big gap, right? Yeah, and the idea of knocking someone out is... Uh, or punching them. Or... Punching them is very daunting and it, it, at a certain age, right? What age it were is. you able to just be like, I, can, I could punch people and like... Fourth grade. Not, not get that feeling of like scaredness right? For, so f- fourth grade I, look i don't think you ever lose that feeling of 
scaredness. Scared Obviously, we're friends. Tim Kennedy, uh, he's been on the show numerous times on Drinking Bros, Range 15 and all that stuff. And I asked him, I was like, hey, man, before you got geared up for all these UFC fights, were you ever nervous? He's like, man, they're, they're, yes, you're, like, you're always nervous because you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, no matter what level of training you're on, there's going to be some level of nerves. There should be. Is if, if you're that relaxed rolling into a UFC ring, something's wrong, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. Um, but with, with my situation as, as a child, first of all, I'm running away. Right. Survivalistic instincts. Sure. Started very young. Right. There's bad people. I got to get the fuck away from them. Sure. Um, then it changed. Uh, the, the kid, there was somebody that stood up to him on the bus, mm-hmm. beat the living shit out of this kid when he got off the bus stop. Right. He never bullied anyone again. And I also remember that from the stance of, oh, all right. So you, you're going to have to fight back for yourself at some point in life because you don't know what's going to happen. And eventually you will get in a fight in real life and you're going to have to defend yourself. And, and how do you do that and why? And is it possible to beat somebody bigger than you? And the answer is yes. Or is it possible to diffuse the whole situation? With Correct. With either humor, talking to people. like Yes. That... I would love for Jax to hone that and at the last resort. Absolutely. But fight in order to do that, mm. you still need a bully. Right. You can't be just uh, <clears throat> fighting against nobody. Yes. And I remember, yeah. I, so fourth grade, I think it was like the first time when I was just like, all right, because you're in elementary school at that point. It only goes through fifth. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, I remember fourth grade, I felt big enough, you know, in my own body to and things. Yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, all right, to defend myself. And that was when I saw like, you know, like a hardcore fight in the gym where you're just like, Whoa, shit. Um, and then middle school is a whole new, a whole nother story, obviously. Right. Where, you know, depending upon what your stitch is and where you live or whatever was going on. But you have to understand too, that that bully couldn't then get on your social media after you run away and completely fucking annihilate you. And, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like make you feel horrible even when you're home, turn your friends against you. Yeah. Like, so do we need bullying in the old school sense that it's left at school? Mm-hmm. You deal with it, whatever, maybe. But the way that it continues now, I guess I kind of understand at a certain age, like if they t- turn everyone against you or they post something on the social media mm-hmm. that makes... I mean, you feel like it's the end of the world. Beauty of our children is this. Their father is one of the top comedy writers in the world. This is my eighth week on the New York Times bestseller list. Boom, winking in a camera. Subscribe on YouTube to the show. Therefore, if he's getting bullied online, mm-hmm. I'll be able to, hey, why don't you slide dad the phone? I will really pick you apart the think, and then I online. wonder if that's even like... Not great. Like, you don't want your dad fighting your battles. It's going to be an interesting world, and I don't think you should dismiss it. You learn how to write. You learn how to write. You learn how to come up with witty quips Mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go from there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, good home life. It is. Trying to communicate. It is, yes, absolutely. I'm trying to start up the dinner thing again. But it it also helps, like, you helped out with an art project the other day. Um, what you made, you, know, you helped our child make. Yeah, could be hanging in the Louvre. Um, and you asked oh, me, you were one? like, "Hey, the, guy, <laughs> the, the man." Uh, I, I looked at this and I was like, "Oh, is this? Did you decide to go abstract?" Or, um, I mean, it was incredible what you did because you're very artistic, right? But I had to make it look like he did it. R- to a certain extent, so it was like this back and forth of like I colored outside the lines. Yeah, a little bit, but then Look, the rest of the hair pieces and the T-shirt you made out of mm. a burlap sack of potatoes and all that stuff—I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! That like that—if you hung that at a gallery, would probably right. go for four sure. or five k. Sure, you know what I'm saying? So that would be an interesting. That is the 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 fine line of it. Um, wow, that would be an interesting thing. It like, would be an interesting art <laughs> show to do, like all like things that moms because moms do all of them. Uh, Mm -hmm. there is, I made like a fox mask for him. (laughs) I got busted one time because I made like a fox mask mask that was like 
gorgeous hairs, you know, yeah. perfect coloring <clears throat> and shading and like Sure. It was awesome. Yeah. And then I, I was like, they were like, huh. So Jax made this. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I I've gotten that. caught before. I mean, they laugh about it. It was preschool. It's, it's funny. like whatever. Yeah, it was yeah. and I, cause I always do it the day before. Yeah. I'm the perfect combination of creative, artistic, and completely disorganized and uh, procrastination. Sure. Right? Sure. Hand in hand. Some would say that those things go hand in hand, mm -hmm. right? You're like a weird, I'll tell you one thing I'm proud of. You're creative and then you're also quite organized in life. Y yes. Um. Not clean or that kind of stuff, but like organized in every other aspect. Correct, yeah. I, I try to be um, because the organization, especially in film and what we do. Right is key to all of this stuff going through. It's like, it's, well, that's like both. day one we've, editor shit. What I tell every editor, I, whoever works with me. We've talked about this before totally. where it's like, there is very small difference between the genius that's making indie films in his hometown, right? Mm -hmm. And Todd Phillips, right? Yeah. There's a very small piece and it's just the, you know, follow through the organization, the production, like the business side of it. And those two things are very rarely together. That's why there's, you know, you see like, I, I have a friend that's so talented, right? I have a mm. friend that blah, blah, blah. Well, they're missing one of the pieces, right? Uh -huh. So they're either missing the business part or they're missing the creative part. Very rarely do they come together, right? Oh yeah, I, absolutely. In either one person or a partnership or whatever. So, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. What am I even talking about? Well, James, anyways, I, 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 like I, I understand what you're saying. Um, so, yeah, but you, you know, back to bullying with all that stuff. Sure, sorry. I don't know what the right answer is. Um, I don't either. I think it's a different world, and I think, like I said, the Bill Burrs and the Joe Rogans and the people that and are the Ross like, Pattersons. I'm sorry, and yep. the Ross Pattersons that say, yep. you know, suck it up. Uh, we need bullies. I had a bully. Ma ma ma. I think that a little bit is out outdated, and there is some truth to it. But at the same time, they're dealing with things that we had no idea. We did not have to deal with half of the shit. Right. Social media wise, just the lawsuits. world. Yeah. Huh. Lawsuits. There's a lot of parental lawsuits these days. Like against what? <clears throat> Yeah, you can sue for fucking anything now. Um, so they're suing schools and they're suing everything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, so, I'm, look, I'm we're I'm cur I'm currently going through one, right? So I just filled out the paperwork for all of the shit. The list of things between parents and children of of what you have to fill out paperwork wise for one of these lawsuits was so extensive and so far beyond like the realm of what I thought it was that I was like, oh my god. Right. Can you really sue for this? Is that a thing that yeah, I mean, parents can, can do? Sue, you can sue for anything, for anything. Right? whether it's going to It could be frivolous, go whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, all that shit. But uh, yeah, I, look, I understand where everybody's coming from. I just, there is going to be a time when you go out into the world and shit's not going to be fun. You're either going to have to defend yourself or whatever. And where, where does that instinct kick in? Is it from a child, like your childhood? Um, are you trained to do it? Wh whatever it is, but uh, I will say to uh, parenting and how we treat children has definitely changed. Where um, I think in our day, parents would be like, "You're okay, you're okay, get up, you're yep. all right." Yeah, and now you we're do like, that all the time, which is good. Yeah, because I think the other side of the coin is parents that are like, "Are you okay?" Right? Yeah. Not, you're okay. You're fine. I can see you're fine. You're okay. Let's go. Are you okay? What's going on? Yeah. What's wrong? And um, I think at a certain, at a certain age, like, you know, when you keep, you're not told that you're okay, you don't, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know if you're okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think there is something to uh, just being more erring on the side of they're going to be okay than this thing of like, what's wrong with them? Are they autistic? Do they need Ritalin? Do they need this? Do they need antidepressants for fucking teenagers? Like, 
you're okay. Yeah. And I think there is, like I said, there are, there's a certain segment of people that need antidepressants, right? Right. I don't believe an unformed brain needs it. I think that there's a reason why on every antidepressant medication may cause suicidal tendencies in teenagers and young adults because their brains are not formed yet. Right. So um, I just think there's, we're in a society now where we're just like, you're not okay? Okay. Instead of, you're okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're fine. We are. You're fine. And we'll see when we get through this, you know, on the other side, when you are an adult, we'll see if you're okay. But for right now, we don't know what's going on. No. Giving <laughs> riddle in at like young ages. No, like, all that shit all is crazy. All of this yeah. fucking shit crazy. is crazy. Yeah. It's just insane. I, I watched that footage of the teacher saving the kid from blowing his brains out in the school. Did you see that? That went viral. No. Man. What happened? It is intense. So it, the kid got arrested. Uh, uh, like all the students ran out of the class, everything. Like uh, they thought there was going to be a school shooting. Okay. Turned out the kid was just going to blow his brains out. Kill himself. Okay. Um, one of the teachers stopped him in the middle of this and just grabbed the gun from him. Um, another teacher came running over. He handed the gun to him, and then he just started hugging the child. And the kid was probably very good while hunting. I love that. Maybe fifteen or sixteen is exactly what it was. And like the kid started crying. The teacher was crying. It was a male teacher who did it, and like. It went viral, and this, this teacher's been everywhere of, like, man. Uh, and he just goes, look, man, kids are going through a lot these days, and things are hard. And, I, I mean, the balls, the brass on this guy Jeez. to do it was yes. amazing. And the footage is extremely powerful where you're like, wow. Right, right. I can't believe it. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess he had, had some know. form of mental problems and yes, illness. I'm and, sure he was on medication. <clears throat> yeah. And, my God. I don't know what that you answer know is. You know I don't care about anything. Yeah. I take no stance on anything <laughs> except for over-medicating people in the U.S. for absolutely everything. Keeping them sick. Keeping them dependent. Yeah. Keeping them depressed. That is the only thing you have legs on. Everything else you are legless in this life on every issue. Absolutely. But that. that means you have no stance. Um, yeah. Nailed it. Boom. But yeah, that is the one thing where you're like, hey man, I fucking hate you pills and all this other shit. Yeah. Do you not? I mean, you see it with anyone, anyone who I do, but I never grew up on medication. So I didn't grow I up on know. medication either, but you see it around you. You see literally all of the commercials, first of all. Like I've said, you see the commercial and then without fail in 10 years, there's a lawsuit yeah. against that thing uh -huh. so and it's it's the perfect cycle for everyone and that's why you know i get it that's why healthcare is so such a hot button issue because big pharma is involved in that and they definitely want you to oh they want you on meds for they sure they want yeah. you on meds yeah. they want you to stay <clears throat> sick if yeah. one medication isn't working do they take you off of it no they give you another medication that will help you deal with this medication right you must have to go to a doctor that's off the grid. I've got one now. Yeah, I had we one both in LA. have. We both have one now. You need to. You need to have one that's just like. Listen, hey, man. Here's, yeah, exactly. You pay cash. Yeah. You pay it's cash. Weird, right? And you go no, but it makes sense because he's not in bed with any fucking. No, he's not. Particular. Nope. Medication. Whereas you go to another place that we went, and it's like, without even seeing like really what the issue is they were ready to diagnose you and give you some well medicine at least and... just try try this yeah, yeah, yeah. at least just <clears throat> try this out and i was you know i had direct experience with it when uh, after jacks i thought it was like postpartum i wasn't it was just like i have tough kids yeah yeah right and oh, it's yeah. really fucking hard. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe I'm postpartum. Is this what you feel like? And they're like, I don't know. A lot of people's babies just like sleep and stuff. And you're like, oh, okay, that must be it. But the lady was ready to, I mean, try everything. Try this. Makes you gain weight. Sex drive is going to go down, but try it. What's going to make you more depressed than gaining weight yeah. and not being interested in your partner? <laughs> and then when I come back to her and I say, yep. 
let me give you something else to work on this part of it. Yeah. And I was just like, holy shit, I just stopped everything. I was like, this is crazy. You don't even want to talk to me about what's going on, right? So it's fucking scary. It's scary. And that kid, I promise you, was on antidepressants. We'll find out. I, You'll find out, but I'm telling you, he probably it, yeah, was. It would appear to me, either way, that footage was crazy. Um, that's been going around the last few days. And then, uh, and then I woke up to the craziest thing ever. I, I know we talk about Joe Rogan uh, a lot oh, on, yeah. on both of these shows. He is the very best doing it right now. He is the top of the, the food chain. I, look, I hope we get to that level one day. Um, but you can't compete with the guests that he gets. And therefore, you talk about him because you're like, how the fuck did you do it? Edward Snowden was on today, and people lost their mind, including myself. I was like, what? And it was yeah. picture in picture. He wasn't in studio, obviously. Of course not. But that is a massive get. Yeah. Like, holy shit. So that one, look, I, I know we say subscribe on YouTube all the time. I would rather watch podcasts and listen to him. Um, personally, it depends on what I'm doing. Obviously, if I'm on a and plane, it depends on the type. But yeah, yes, if I'm on a plane or whatever. This one, I purposely on the drive over to the studio today. I was like, you know what? I'll hold off on that audio. I'm gonna watch that video later. And, okay, uh, get loose. Yeah, get into it. Get into it because we need, uh, at least me. I feel like we need more shit. We were super late to the game on Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Chernobyl on uh, HBO, but we're halfway through that now. I think that's what everyone's now. calling it, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Right? <laughs> it's I want so, a sequel. Talk about fucking intense, dude. Show me Fukusami next. And or talk about Fukushima, creating whatever, Fukushima, Shimi, whatever the fuck it is over in Japan. Because they had an, they they had one find too. Find out what it is. I'll find out what it is. Um, talk about creating suspense with nothing right because it's radiation so even just a scene with two people talking to each other and that creepy music that they have because yeah. you know the radiation is in the <clears throat> air it's so fucking crazy fukushima cool um is was the nuclear fuka, disaster fuka, fuk you. yeah fuck you dude fuck you bro my only and i love it and i'm hooked and we're oh. we only got a few more left um and, and I again, I know I'm super late to the yeah. The we, dance were told many on this one. Yes, we, we were told yes, many times. Yes, it, yes. We've been out of town a lot, and uh, a lot of crazy guests and all that stuff, uh, including next week. But um, uh, we were super late to the party on this. My only complaint is, and I love the show. I do love it. Is that it, it is all British actors with hardcore British accents playing Russians? Listen, I didn't want to read the. I didn't want to read. The TV show. So I think they probably had a conversation, right? Not that. Do people want to read this entire show? Not, no, 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 not that. Just with a Russian accent speaking an American. It's a little, it was a little jarring to see Gorbachev with a British accent to me. Did he? Yeah. All, all of them. Boris had German. All of them were. Every character on that show is British and they're great. Skarsgård is on it from Good Will Hunting, speaking of which. Yes, that's what I mean. He's yeah, yeah, a yeah. Boris. Yeah. But, um, well, that's his character name. Yes. But he does not have a Russian accent where you're just like. He is German. He does, a little bit. And that's what's weird. It's like, hey, man, can we just keep this consistent with one accent? Or I, and, and I, my guess is a British company was the one who paid for this and did it all. Uh, but that's, just, that's my only gripe with the show. But it's fucking great, man. What a crazy time. Yeah. And I know nothing about nuclear disasters or nuclear science or fish, like any of that stuff mm. whatsoever and it's fascinating to me where you're just like oh jesus christ it could literally all end because it just happened in russia again with a with a boat sub went down that was one of their nuclear submarines that they're working on 18 people died and uh, luckily it happened out in the ocean and they were able to contain it pretty quickly mm -hmm. but that story went and gone real quick we were just right. like what the fuck really went on there um, and that's put that's in this show. It is of how they're like. It is, yeah. <laughs> and tried. how fast America got a hold of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, that that show, man, has been been on fire. And and again, like I, besides that, pun intended, on fire. But um, besides that, I, I we're looking for things to watch. So like this Rogan thing, I'm down for tonight, man. Murder on the Bayou. Mm. Check not for you. No, not I'm for talking me. to them. Yeah. Uh, a maze. 
<laughs> Showtime, Murder on the Bayou. I think it's an eight part, six part, um, all about these, the uh, Jeff Parrish eight. So this d- dingy Cajun town in uh, Louisiana. Okay. Eight girls, like every six months, two times a year, whatever, these girls are found dead. Okay. And the investigation is into the law enforcement, essentially. Because they are people that no one cares about. They're drug addicts, prostitutes. So no one really cares that they die. Mm -hmm. So it's a really crazy road. And the other thing, I think Bill Burr does a thing in his uh, stand-up about this Cajun people that like live among us that can't even speak. Correctly. Oh yeah. I mean that accent yeah, 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 yeah. and the whole thing is so thick. Yes. You're like, you live you live in the same country as I mean, you're from here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. very strange. He if you, he does a really funny thing on it. If but, you if you go out to the sticks of all of this shit, like I don't know and if you've been especially Louisiana that yeah, deep yeah. in the south. Because that happened to me no, in Arkansas one night. Yeah, no, I haven't been deep enough. No. Yeah. I haven't been deep enough. You uh, can literally get away with murder out there because there's no cameras, life form, any of that shit. I will say specifically by you. So specifically alligator hunters, yeah. specifically this Cajun French influence, this crazy world Yeah, is a uh, very interesting. Um, you'll be pissed at the first two episodes and then you're like, oh, fuck them. So it's really, really good. Another thing on Netflix is called tell me, who I am. Okay. Documentary. All right. Two twins. One of them gets in an accident, loses his long-term memory. Okay. One of them. Sure. Is it a true so story? The, yes. Okay. It's a documentary. All right. The other one has to then explain to the twin his whole life. And does the twin he forgot his whole? Does the twin retain the 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 information that he's receiving? Then yes, yes. So okay. he just lost whatever it is that he hit his head in such a way that you lose. Mm. It's amnesia basically, but it doesn't. Yeah. It's not reoccurring. It's just you lose your the whatever in your brain that keeps all of your old memories. It's, your look, life. That's the very notebook. You know. You got to keep reading the same story over and over again to that. Yeah. Woman. So that's not what it is. But um. Yeah, it's a lot like that. No, because he remembers. Once you tell him, at this point, once you tell him, he the knows. The lady. Oh, okay. Gotcha, Do you know what I'm gotcha, saying? Gotcha, so yes, it's yes, like yes. it's not like fifty first dates or notebook or anything like this. Right, right. Once you tell him, so he you cre- he has to tell him and show him pictures and basically create his whole backstory because he only knows going forward. Would you lie to him? Watch it. What? Watch it. It's so good. All right. Because that's my first thought of uh-huh. like, hey man, at what but, point do you're like, hey, your dad? But what if? So I'm going to pose this question. So what if (laughs) you guys both had a horrible childhood? Would you lie? I could already tell you that I would lie. No shit. All right. How many, how many parts is that? It's just one. So it's a documentary. It's just a movie. Um, gosh, tell me what you think guys. I will. So you've watched the whole thing already. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll catch it on my own. Now I'm curious. That's now that sounds rad. It's one of those things where you go real life is crazier than fiction, right? Like yes, there, real there, there life is a lot of elements. So it can be yes, it can be crazy. Yeah, and secrets and just that moment of I mean they're older now, way older, mm-hmm. and the moment of and they have everything on camera. Um, Oof. They they clearly you know, at some point we're like, you know, this is, this can be a documentary. So at some point they started filming stuff. Right. Do you right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. So they have a lot of footage stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, and moments that are real moments caught on camera because they were like, all right, this is the moment we're going to do this. We're going to tell each other this, or he's going to tell me this or whatever. And they sit down and film it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me who I am. Yeah. Uh, look, Netflix is on fire right now. Uh, they're, well, it's, it's weird. You go through spurts, right? Where you have greatness and, and then downtime and whatever. We just watched El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie. So good. Man. So I, good. It was everything. It was, 
it was a tough watch for me to flip it on, and I'll tell you why. I was so worried that they were going to fuck it up, right? Like fuck up that world. But it's Vince. I mean, it is. Yeah. But like, you don't you don't enjoy Better Call Saul. I do. You do not. I don't. But it's not meant to be uh, an extension of Breaking Bad. It is a little bit, but he wanted to make it different. You know, yeah, but it's still like, you're still elements. telling the, the, the yeah. characters, and it's all the characters from Breaking Bad. They're all back. Um, I uh, think I just didn't love the journey of Saul, and I loved more those two. You know, sure. Jesse and so Walter. I'm, uh, yeah. with with Jesse, I'm the same way. Where I love Jesse, um, right? I was happy that he got out of there at the end of Breaking Bad. Obviously, not a spoiler alert because it ended five years ago. So if you haven't seen it now, fuck off. Grow up. Yeah, grow up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm not going to give away anything that happens in the Breaking Bad movie. However, it was exactly what I wanted it to be for all of those characters. And I was extremely amped about it. And uh, I felt more relieved at the end of it where I was just like, oh, not because of what happened in the ending, but because that was the ending that I personally wanted for all the characters and everything. And yeah, I felt relieved that they didn't fuck it up. I was just like, oh, oh, the thank God. The song at the end, the last shot. Yeah. It was everything I wanted personally. So, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be people that weren't happy, but I. No, I. I, I for, have you I, heard anything? No, I okay. haven't heard anyone who was unhappy with this movie. And uh, certainly I'm not one of them. It was exactly what I wanted. But at the end of it, when the credits hit, I was like, oh, thank God they didn't fuck this up. Right. Like I just didn't want to f- to, to fuck yeah, it up because yeah, now yeah, yeah. more and more that they're remaking everything from the past, every franchise. Another one just popped up today. They're gonna Netflix is rumored to start making Charmed movies. A uh, TV show Charmed with Alyssa Milano and yeah, but that's not gonna affect anyone. The other girls. It will f- for the people that like Charmed. Who is that? Yeah. Well, look. I'll I'll, so I'll I'll put it in my find me one. I'll find you. I'll, I'll put it in my court here. The ball in my court, Jabes. Wet Hot American Summer to me was one of my favorite comedies of all time. Yeah. Netflix remade that into a series. The first season was everything that I wanted it to be, and then they did another one, and I wasn't that amped about the second season. Oh, I don't remember season. the second one. Yeah, exactly. Did I watch it? Yeah, you watched it with me. What up, girl? Look. I, and I remember there was a point where you turned over and went to bed, and you were just like, just can't get into this one. That's not new, but yeah. And, and that's that's how Arrested Development was for me. Where I loved, oh, I loved it. I loved it when it was on air. I did not like it when it went to Netflix. And you know, uh, this Breaking Bad though, that for me was it is my number one drama of all time. My my one through three are Breaking Bad, Sopranos, and The Wire. Um, I did not want them to fuck that up for me. Sopranos is going through it right now as well. They've already shot the movie um, where you've got the young Tony and the, it's the prequel of his life. Don't fuck that up for me, man. It's his fucking kid. I mean, it's got to be good, right? It's the same people again, but, you know, again, don't fuck that up for me. Uh, yeah. The movie for Deadwood. Hmm. I, I, I liked it because I was a huge oh. Deadwood fan. It was fine. It, like, you know, it was good enough. But still, like, we were teetering on the edge where some of those characters were really fucking old. And I was like, man, do not fuck this up for me. Don't do it. Right. Don't you back in I go, my so called life, party of five. Mm -hmm. And it's something. I'm not not actually shitting on those. My so called life was great. Uh, And imagine. Really great. (laughs) And look, look at the two leads of that now Claire Danes, Jared Leto. You bring them back for a drama like that in today's world with kids? Let's say you flipped it like every other reboot is going to do. And they've got kids now dealing with the social media. Everything we talked about at the top of the show. That would be a fucking crazy ass HBO drama. Yeah. That would be, or a Netflix drama that would be intense and awesome and rad, right? Right. Whereas, you know, some of these shows you're like, ah, we probably shouldn't have. I'm telling you that. also, Party of Five, all those motherfuckers can step right back into that show. Yeah. By the way, Scott Wolf. Scott Wolf being the fucking front runner. He's looking younger. I know. He looks great. Uh, Fox. Naomi Matthew Campbell. Fox. Not a Fox. Foxy. Dude. Dude. Give it, give it to me. What Grow ha- that what hair out and let's do this fucking thing. What the fuck thing. happened to him? 
He had some weird stuff, right? He was on he, Lost and I know, destroyed and made a fuck ton of money. He had some drinking issues. Did he? Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. Something happened. Look, you play a character that intense on TV for that many years. I don't blame him for that. Yeah. I'm not going to fault him for that. Uh, who's the other one? It's Naomi. Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. That's it. She, she looks, looks great. great. She was just in a movie with The Rock. She looked amazing. She looked great. Amazing. Those three bring um, those back. I bet the worst one is the little kid, Owen. I haven't seen him. <laughs> I always thought those twins were on fucking drugs. Do you remember the yeah. kid? Yeah. He was just always, and we're like, dude, what the fuck is up with the kids? So, they had to, right? Here's the bad news, okay? He was on drugs? No. They Did are, they have to slip him something? Nope. Uh, I don't know what happened to the children, okay? No, I'm saying on the show, do you think they slipped him a little? A little Mick? A little Mickey? I mean. Yeah, probably. Probably put a little uh, half a Valium Talk about mouth. saggy bottom dingling. Yeah. I mean, that kid was a. Qu- they probably put a quarter uh, Valium in his in his. Probably, right? Yeah. Back in the day? Yeah, back in party the day. Party five days? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah, already yeah, making yeah. party of five right now. They are. Mm. Chaubert. She oh, can Lacey step Chaubert. right back. Whew. A little different. She's a little different, but hey, do it. She still holds up. God, there was some. Sure. I, I met I met with her on a movie, and I forget which one it was. She's fine. She, she's yes, fine. she's fine. Um, she but up. they're remaking that fucking show with a very ethnically diverse cast right now. Oh, so no. buckle up for that, Jabe. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. It's a shame. Love shit. Party of and uh, oh my God. sorry that I forgot about the sponsors. I mean, you didn't forget. I didn't forget. We just, we start rapping you and I, and you know, the next thing you know, they love when we talk about Party of Five, and then pants off. Right into the right into the pants off ghost bed. Pants off. Ghost bed. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros. What up, girl? Oh, what up? Oh, what up, girl? So happy to be back in the ghost bed. My gourd. My gourd. My gourd. Um, it, look, the 36-month page you go program no interest is, is where it's at. Uh, everybody keeps hitting me up about that. 38 bucks. Son of a bitch, dude. I mean, that's like a fucking... That's like two apps. That's like having HBO and Showtime apps. Except you get a fucking mattress. Right. <laughs> it's amazing, right? You start pricing it there out like that. There are any other number of things, yeah, that cost that much. Yeah, but, but those two are just a, like, all right, cool. A bed, yeah. yeah, yeah I pay yeah. for a lot of bullshit stuff that's, that's sure. 38 bucks a month. Yeah. That I'm not amped about, you know? Birch box, yeah. I'm fine with your birch box thing, to be honest with you. It's a nice little treat. I know I do you it for, and another guy in the neighborhood love to make fun of us. We do, but like, look. You say, oh, pay 10 bucks for these free samples. Mine's, bo- mine's box of awesome, but you actually get like rad ass shit. Um, and I love so it. So do we. I promo code drinking brush 20% off at boxofawesome.com. But uh, yes, um, ghost bed, man, is, is the fucking best in the biz if you're if you're military or a first responder, you get fifteen percent off of everything in the store. If you're a regular fucking human like myself, their Halloween deals right now go to their site will tear your face off. Sleep so good it's scary at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Love them. Love them, love them. And just a quick reminder, I host Drinking Bros podcast as well. So in case you don't know, pop on over there and uh, check out some shit. And get some big guests coming up. And I'm on the news. Yeah. Every Which Thursday. Which is hard to believe, but yep. You're, you're great on the news. Yeah, great addition. Pop, pop in. Great addition. Pop, pop, pop in. Pop, pop, pop in. Pop in. Uh, Strikeforceenergy.com is up next. And uh, man, I have, this is one product where everybody keeps hitting me up and they're like, man, it, when I get this, like I'm, I'm hooked on it. And I was like, I get it, man. It comes like, It's spreading. It becomes a part of your every day. It's, it's kind of like sleeping in a great mattress where you're like, dude, if I don't have that mattress, I feel like shit. Yeah. Uh, Strike Force is one of those things where you, you pop in a pack all the time. You always need energy. Last longer, power energy. And you just squeeze in a drink. And if you're fucking drinking, White Claws, dude. We got a lot of big college football games this weekend. And uh, people are like, how do I fucking stay up and party all day? Because you got Ohio State at noon, which is. Your friends are pissed, huh? They're oh, going there? Livid. They're so fucking angry. I, as am I. What I'm about not, your brown friend? I'm not amped. Yeah, my, my brown skin friend is. Is, uh, is he pissed too? He's pissed. They're all pissed. Everybody's sorry, coming in town. Sorry, buddy. Got moved to a nooner game. And you're just like, <laughs> bro. Because he parties. On, he yeah. parties. He's like, oh, man, I'm going to have to start at 9 a.m. And I want to make a. I want to make a. a the distinction here of, of brown versus black. That is, I am talking about my Shut Indian friend. 
up. My dude. Indian friend. No, he is very. <laughs> I was teeing you up to be like, not yep. at all, not at all. He is very specific about being called brown skinned. Um, I don't know what that is. So fuck it. Uh, anyways, drink up. Put the strike force in your vodka or your your white claws, whatever you're drinking this weekend, because shit, man. That's the only thing that's going to keep you going. If you got a big, so you got Ohio State, Wisconsin at noon, right? right. Blamo, Dodge Durango, um, and then that that night game is LSU Auburn. So it's like, ooh, dang! Come on now, or come on. I mean, that's a that's a noon to midnight. You're that's twelve hours worth of amazing games all day long. Tear your face off. Should we watch that night game somewhere? Yeah, fucking call homegirl. Call Brooke, dude. That's okay. her team. It's her team. I will say she will be home like glued to the TV. She doesn't want to go anywhere. That's and, like, the way it should be. If that's your team, yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. man, yeah. light it up. Uh, and I get it, man. That's a tough game. We have a tough game, too. So, yeah, maybe we'll fucking call them over or whatever. I have a fucking soiree. I'm, we're going to go over to my parents for it. Um, I'm going to take the child because here's why I'm bitching about the noon game. By the way, Strike Force Energy. Dot com uh, promo code oh, revolution twenty percent off. You guys know it. No worries. You're not fucking new to this. But dude. I coach, and I you know, I, and I enjoy it. I love coaching all of my kids' stuff. Um, sure. But his soccer game ends at noon. I coached one time and we lost, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I've I'm undefeated. We have not lost except for the time that you had to fill in for me, and sure. I am sorry for sure. that. And um, yeah. But the game ends at noon, which is pretty, you know. Oh, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, but then he, there's like snow cones and all that other stuff, right? Yeah, so calm down. You're going to get a snow cone with your kid, and then you're going to go watch I am, the but game. I'm going to miss the first quarter, You'll probably. And because it's we're number three in the nation, you put us on at noon, fuck you guys, dude. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine, but I'm not amped about it. Sure. Imagine my friends who are going to be raging Friday night, and then they're going to be hungover as shit. Tailgates are now going to start at 6 a.m. What are they raging Friday night for, though? Um, Just in general? Single, no kids? Or what no, you, you know everybody, everybody gets back together in town. You go to a big oh, dinner. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they're you've coming been into out. Town. You've been to. Uh, you've been out. With I'm all bummed of these. they're not going to be there. We fucking house. We go. We fucking house. You've been to all these things. So it's like, Kidding, hey, you're, if you guys can imagine Chad getting together with all his brads and his real brat. He has a real brad. Yeah, Brad McMahon, one of my best friends. <laughs> this Chad getting together with all his brads, mm-hmm. like it goes. <laughs> down and then your brown skin friend too man yeah you guys really fucking party and it's fun as shit <laughs> but it is always shitty and i've been in that situation before too where we go to a day game we have to go to pint house at like 11 yeah a.m for Brutal. brunch yeah. and it's like oof. hard you know i can't fucking it's do it. my alarm doesn't go off till five so it's like and here's how hard, like, you know, you, you go back to college, essentially. It's essentially what it is, right? Everybody really gets fucking is. blasted. The best one was my friend showing up the next morning um, after the game on a Sunday, and he had no shoes or socks on. And he was knocking on the door, and he was just like, hey, man. Was I there? No. Uh, no, you weren't, th- you weren't there for this This one. was before me. Uh, no, I, we were together. Uh, this was probably 2015, maybe. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, yo, why, why I don't understand why you don't have socks or shoes. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. He blacked out on someone's porch. Um, he was looking for my brown skin friend's house. But okay. They all kind of look similar, you know? And uh, he blacked out on someone else's porch. Sure. And someone stole his shoes in the middle of the night when he was blacked out. Yeah. So. Obviously. Off of his feet. in <laughs> Downtown Columbus. <laughs> Obviously, that sounds about right. But that's what I'm talking. But about. how do you say as a grown man in your 30s of like, hey man, uh, somebody stole my shoes last night? What? Again, I'm trying to find the place, and I blacked out weird. on someone else's porch, and someone stole my shoes off of my feet. It sounds, yeah, that it doesn't sounds sound like the wire weird to me. But like, yeah, you know, top three shows sounds like the wire. You're just like, what? Somebody's fucking stealing your shoes? That's what happened to him. That's how hard we go. Mm-hmm. So, hashtag sorry, not sorry. Uh, next up, last but not least, straightrazors.com is what they came for, Jabes. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right, kids? There it is, Jabes. There it is. It's time to get a kit. It's getting close to Christmas. Ooh. Get it for a loved one. Go full fulcrum. You know, mm. shave up. Shave everything you got. Get a spring break kit. 
Yeah. Is huh? that a? Nope. We're not even close Christmas. to spring. Christmas before yeah, that. Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. Christmas before, before that. that. Um, Christmas before pleasure. <laughs> That's what they always say. Nope. Okay. Uh, beard oils, <laughs> conditioners, shampoos, mustache waxes, best straight razors in the biz. Worried about using a straight razor? Use a safety razor. I got it. You don't have to be. You uh, can have a stash for. For Christmas? No, yeah. for like November. Yes. yes. Okay. So we're okay. coming up on it. Um, there was a again. There was like one or two more things that I was waiting to shake out. I, I can tell you what it is. I'll give you the promo code for this, and I'll tell you what it is. Um. Straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. I use their fucking aftershave and all their shit like every day. I love it. There's a reason they've been on our program for since day one for three years. They're great. They're the best in the biz. High-end products, 20% off is a big fucking deal there. So go get your shit. Here's where the stash comes into play for me, okay? I have been hired. <laughs> no, it sounds crazy. This has actually happened in the past, and it's happening again. I've been hired to speak at a college. Um, oh, that's right. November fourteenth. So I am debating. I got the, I got the the etiquette rules to uh, last week, and I, I'll re, I'll read it off to you. I think I still have it. Um, you have the the etiquette rules for how you look, how you yeah, act. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you going with Jared? I am. And so Jared <laughs> wore a suit. Um, when he, oh, he hosted That's one right. of these, he's, he's good it was a terrible that. suit, mm -hmm. um, horrible, horrible looking suit. But uh, wasn't it a day suit? It was like a Panama Jack suit. Like it was yeah, a yeah, yeah, linen, yeah. like a white He looked like linen. he was running a cigarette boat. Yeah, out yeah, of Cuba. yeah, 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 like yeah. That type Panama of suit. red. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so there was there wasn't etiquette of like business casual is what they're saying. Like okay. you know, I don't have to wear a tie. Yeah, but, it's but business casual. You know, jeans and a. Um, sure. And obviously they, they pay no you a tie. fee and all that other stuff. And like, Sports if I wasn't getting paid for it, I would just show up in fucking jams, you know, some mm -hmm. flip-flops and then say, mm -hmm. hey, man, mm -hmm. here's what the world is. Um, but the interesting part about this is uh, I thought it was going to be about books or film or something. That's what it usually is for me. Um, this one is actually about podcasts. Yeah. Um, they are starting to implement podcasts uh, minors and majors at schools now. And I'm just like, holy shit. Mm. Um, crazy, crazy world. So yeah, uh, D'Anthony and I will be there. Jared and I will be there. And uh, talking about how to grow a big podcast and all that other shit. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I... I think a mustache would be fine, right? Yeah, it's November. So the right. thing with November is that everyone can have the mustache and you can keep <laughs> it going after that. But... Because it's for a cause, right? You can. It is, yeah. 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 So in November, yep. Everyone's like, "Oh, okay, for November, right?" And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can just keep it going after that. Yes. So, I I, I think I will start soon, very soon. Um, probably after. I'll, I'll probably start next Monday. Okay. So that way, it's all right. Cool, man. I'll give myself a little time. Because I only have what to coach like one. There's only like two more games left, I think, on the thing too. Yeah. That in between period is really rough, especially when you're coaching young children. Yeah, it definitely looks like Ooh, dirty bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. So old dirty bottom jeans. The old dirty bottom jeans popping up again. <laughs> dirty bottom jeans. Dirty, dirty bottom jeans. Dirty, dirty, dirty bottom jeans. Dirty, 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 dirty bottom jeans. <laughs> um, so I, it's a it's a tough one to to gauge with uh, with children, but I'll, I'll probably pop it off next next Monday. I'll start that up. I always use that mustache wax from uh, Straight Razors. Have to. I it force It's a little you to. squirrely. Yeah. Well, you have to. You have to. You got to soften it up. You got to keep it all going the same direction. You yeah. got to yeah. groom, gentlemen. You do. Sorry. You got to go one direction with it. You know? Just like Harry Styles. Nailed it. Nailed you it. You were waiting on it. You were sitting on it. No. No. Nailed it. I just licked the thing. Oh, you just licked the microphone? Good luck. Ooh. Good luck Good with luck that. Staying fucking we actually healthy don't, we, after we actually that. don't change these things. <laughs> no one does. You know the worst one I ever smelled? Please tell me. Please tell Michael me. Michael Rappaport's. I'll never forget the smell of no his. No way. Yeah. But I, and look, I'm not saying it was him personally. It could have been his guest. He hands it to everyone. But the way that he does it, guys, too, is like he. He has it on the cord, and he's holding this part it's of this very huge thing. It's very Freddie Mercury. So it's, yeah, but it's like right <laughs> in there, right? 
So it's just right on your face the whole, whole yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting way to do it. I, li- I like his style, but it's... Yeah, I, I don't mind it. It's weird because you know, his, his mics are actually pretty heavy, so... They are. <laughs> Anyways, that was the worst smelling one of all time. Ever. And I'll never forget the smell of it. It's kind of sour. Kind of like oh, a sour God. scent to it where you're just like, Ugh, Quit. yeah, boy. Quit, bro. Quit. Uh, yeah, boy. Is he um, uh, I want to talk about Nicki Minaj. She got married. To that fucking prisoner, dude. To the ex-con? Yeah. The guy was in jail for like attempted rape and murder and all this other shit. Go pull up the picture. (laughs) Yeah. Go pull up the picture of the two of them. Yeah, I got it. It is fucking weird, man. I mean, that guy looks like he's murdered 30 people. I was on the Lori Laughlin. Oh. Yeah. He's like, that's a real murder where you're like, hey, man, if you think about what a convicted murderer looks like. Sure. And you would think. Like the, the hot convict. Remember when that guy was sweet going around? Yeah. Um, like hot convict. He softened up when he got out of jail, was smiling a lot in photos. He wasn't like, yo. Right. Yo. Right. This guy still This guy is, is still posing as if there's going to be a fight at lunch. You know? I think she's trying to compete with, uh, what's her face? Oh, my God. Cardi B. Why? She's with... Fuck the Migos. She's with an offset. I'm trying. She's trying to compete. Uh, there can only be one, unfortunately, big superstar girl in the rap game at one time. Uh huh. It's just been proven. So she is above Nikki right now. Nikki may be trying some kind of. She's just trying to compete. Compete. She's I trying g- to get I back guess. in the. She's kind of trying to get back in the dirt. I I. I uh, I, I heard the around. opposite. I heard she was going to retire. Well, she said she was going to retire and uh, have kids and a family and all that other shit. Okay. So maybe my thing is this. You can't compete against the Migos right now. So like she would have to marry somebody on that level. To me, like if she would have married Drake, that would have been an all-time power couple on the level of Beyonce and Jay-Z. Right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the route I pictured her going. Mm-hmm. This is not it, where you're just like, hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? You gave her too much credit. I did. Yeah. Well. I did. You do it all the time. Well, I've had people work with, some of our friends have worked with her a lot. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, because she, from all, all accounts I've heard, she's built herself into this brand that is very hard to do. Because um, you have to, especially for a female rapper, cause you have to have endless hits, which she did. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, she's not putting out new music now. You got to have endless hits and then be hot enough on top of it to fucking sell this shit around the world, right? She had all that. And then she marries a prisoner? Or, I mean, this guy's bowing up. Like, just Look. flexing on everybody. I give this six months before he knocks out a photographer and shit gets real bad. Yeah. I'm talking like broken eye socket shit. But that'll be good for her. No, that'll be terrible for her. Maybe. Then you got to defend this dipshit where you're just like, oh, Christ. What is it now? You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, hot con. At least he stayed out of trouble. He was just like, yeah. Yeah. Left his, left his girl that was waiting for him the well, whole time. For it was a hey, billionaire. Look. A, an heiress billionaire. Sure. Uh, and sure. A child sure. with. So. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, man. I'm going to. Look, I'm going to read some of the, the, the hits here. He actually met her. When she was 16 years old. So they did date from high school. Oh. They got that going for her, right? Well, then, you know, huh? there's lots of ins and right. outs. So there's, look, before, I go, of, before uh, I go cons, pun intended, I'll go pros. You got that. They, were met, they met in high school and dated in high school. Yeah, so she's a decent rela- the relationship. Held right? the candle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's a registered sex offender. Now that's where we start to go down now but look you know you never know what that actually means could be peeing in public uh no he served four years in prison four so yeah you don't know what it is though they use sex offender very sure uh very broad term by the way he served uh four years in prison that was in 1995 okay i'm gonna tell you this you're not going to prison for four years straight in a hardcore thing if shit wasn't fucked up probably Statutory rape could be part of it, which is like you're two years older, three years older. Ah, maybe. 
maybe. That's a lot of it. It's a level two, whatever that is. Um, so I don't know. Uh, that was in 95. Okay. Right? Four years in jail. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 2006. Um, he pleaded guilty for first degree manslaughter. Again, you know, broad, it's broad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a lot of ins and outs. You never, never really know what happened there. Uh, so he was actually tied to a shooting death in 2002. That got him in 2006. Um, he served, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison, mm -hmm. but released in 2013. Okay. Um, so look, man, that is, that's only seven years for murder. You get to murder somebody for seven years. It's not bad at all. It's kind of like, all right. Yeah, not bad at all. Um, and then uh, he's a father of five. Mm -hmm. Currently. Sure. So he's five, uh, five children. Family um, man. Huh? Uh, no. Okay. Nope. Nope. Definitely not a family man. Starting, uh, starting a new family. Uh, mm -hmm. So at least, look, again, pros and cons. Mm -hmm. At least she wants the family. You know he's fertile. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. He's able to pop out kids because he's already done it five times. Right. So good for him on all that. Uh, you know that the guy doesn't pop him out, right? It is. It's pretty much all in the guy. Okay. So women are just vessels for what we do and uh -huh. pretty much all of us, you know? Uh, <laughs> totally joking. This is going to end horrifically is what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. No. And, I mean, I guess you're probably right about that. Uh, I want everyone to buckle up for this. I mean, even though the, the wedding thing was weird, I guess they, they got a, a license to get married. And so they had to, because they had whatever happened to them. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. Uh -huh. But the, the, the license was about to run out in order to get a new one. It would have taken another 90 days or whatever. So mm -hmm. like they got married and, the back of some fucking court. Yeah. And then now they're going to have like a big wedding for it or right. blah, blah, blah. That photo that you saw was the one where they got married in the court and he still bowed up. Like, oh gosh. Yeah. That looked like a night at the club. No? Yeah. Oh, okay. he looked like he had just finished, you know, doing bench 225, mm. a set of, a set of 20 where you're just mm. like, yo dude, I mean, we're like, we're good. All arms though. Uh, mm. arms and chest. No That's pretty leg, much all you need no in this life. Days. No, no leg days in prison. Nah, you don't need that in real life. So, yeah, a lot of crimes, a lot of crimes. Speaking of crimes, we have a crime corner today, James? We do, and it's going to really? tie, tie in beautifully on accident. Fuck off. Uh, crime corner, crime corner. Crime corner. Yeah. So Georgia sheriffs... Post no trick or treat signs uh, that trigger lawsuits from sex offenders. Ooh. Okay, so in Georgia, a group of sex offenders is suing the Butts County Sheriff's Office. You bet. Blammo, 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 blammo. Um, for posting no trick or treat signs on their homes. Huh. So this guy, uh, the Gary Long of the Butts County sheriff oh let me i just want to say the who's uh, your detective on yeah this my one? detective is rihanna oh, rossi I, xx rihanna that's yeah, probably the real rihanna yeah i think it's probably rihanna anyway uh no she's got a black rifle coffee uh sweatshirt in her picture so okay anyway uh so gary long uh is the one that started this initiative where they go to all the 200 registered sex offenders in the county and put signs on their door that say no trick or treating. Got it. Okay. And so no trick or, says warning no trick or treat at this address, a community safety message. So the these group of sex offenders is suing the sheriff's department. Mm. Uh, the law allows the sheriff to put a list of registered sex offenders at his office at the courthouse on the internet, the lead attorney for uh, petitioners said. It does not allow him to go door to door telling people you have a sex offender living next door to you. Yeah. Um, who, I, do I, I'm, I'm not on the sex offender's side. 
but maybe. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how that works, James. Again, because it is a very broad, I mean, it's famously known that like you can get a sex offender charged for peeing in public. And that's always something that's like stuck in my yeah. head. So it's a really, really broad. Or too close to like a, like a school or a playground or something like that. Yeah. 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 Or again, like having sex with someone that's like two or three years younger than you sure. when you're older than it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. How do you feel? You're down for it and like no going onto their property and putting the signs up. It's so. What do you think? I don't know, man. I, it, What's the right thing to say? I don't know. But uh, there are individuals who have been brave enough to not be afraid to let the public know that they are registered sex offenders, which is not actually true. You don't get to choose whether people know or not. Right. The sex offender registry. You just get registered. Once you get convicted, right? I don't. So you don't choose to register yourself. No, no, no. You don't yeah, choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you, it's mandatory. It's not bravery. Yeah, it's, man, yeah. it's mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mandatory. Um, that's a weird one. It's it a really weird. weird one. I don't know. Yeah. It's a, it's a Halloween one, and it's a thinker. It what is, think? yes. It is. Would you want to know where not to trick or treat? I mean, your parents are going to be right there, but I don't know. Are your parents going to be there? If I've your gone parents trick aren't or treating with you. without my, my parents. Like, you know, you get to yeah, a certain well, age when you go with your friends. You? What is it, fifth grade, fourth grade? Mm. Probably. Through the neighborhood, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I remember some parents used to sit in a car and just be like, all right, cool. You can, you know, like when we we're poor and shit, you go to a nicer neighborhood. Yeah. And you're like, all right, hey, go trick or treating there and we'll wait in the car here, mm-hmm. you know? That happens a lot. Yeah. So I just think if people are concerned about that, they can go onto the map. And they can find out for themselves. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they are, you can pull up the map and yeah. the dots will be everywhere. 100%. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Butts County. Of course it is. My favorite county in Georgia. <laughs> you know I'm from there. You're from Butts? No. Uh, Georgia. I wish I was from Butts. <laughs> um, but I was up, sex uh, offenders. up near Cumming, actually. So. C U M M I N G, you bet. No, you weren't. Yes. That is 20 minutes from my house. So, What's the uh, travel time from butts to coming? Um, <laughs> probably pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> Blammo! <laughs> probably pretty, pretty quick. Uh huh. You, you, know? th- you think? You're, you're not used to it. Sure. You're not used to that, sure, uh, sure, that, that drive. route. Narrow roads. <laughs> not used to that route. It's a tight route. squeeze, yeah. Oh, yeah. In those, some of those, you passing a truck or something like that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have a wet road. Um, <laughs> let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Oh, perfect. Shall we? Perfect. Jobless. Perfect. Um, this one. Oh wait, wait. Uh, Jamie's popping in here. North Carolina has a lights out law. They just have to turn off the porch lights uh, if offen- if if the offense is bad. No shit. That's real, Jamie. For trick or treating? Yeah. Wow. Fucking A. What do you sorry, what does that mean? Um, if your if your sex offense is bad, our producer Jamie just popped in with that. Um, if your sex offense is that bad, you have to turn the lights off on your porch so that people That's a law? Yeah, it's a law. They have to do it? Yeah, if the offense is bad enough. If the offense is bad so enough. So they are there are levels yeah. in the sex yeah. okay. Okay. So let me ask you okay. this, Jamie. Okay. Do you know what a level two is then, what this guy was f- for uh, Nicki Minaj? Yeah, look up, look up that then. I'm curious to know what that is and how bad it is. Yeah. Um, it was in New Jersey, I think it says. Uh, look up level two in New Jersey. Uh, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day. I, I know we've talked about this guy in the past, and I'm going to talk about him again because I'm, I can't believe it's still open. Um, this one's going out to uh, Russ McCamey. Um, it's Halloween, kids. And this is still open around everybody. There's a wait list of like, I don't know, a year or two years to get into this fucking thing. It's the world's most terrifying haunted house experience where they have to find that. You have to sign the 40 page waiver. We watched it on yeah. that thing, that doc, and we talked about it last year. Um, you, you have to create a safe word, pass a physical, all this shit to get in there. And nope. Uh, yeah. Nope. Uh, the, we talked about the show was on Haunters, Art of the Scare. 
It was on, a, and it was also on the episode of Dark Tourist. Remember mm-hmm. we watched that, uh, which was great. When is Dark Fucking Tourist coming? I back? know. I loved that show. Netflix has got a ton of great shit. Bring it back, man. Um, they're just moving on. I, you know, they're pumping out a lot of money. They just sold two another two billion worth in bonds to get. Because you have to pay for all this shit, mm. content wise. Yeah. Um. So it's the this it's in Summertown, Tennessee. It's so extreme, no one has ever successfully completed the experience. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Um, and he says he says he's got a new one. The guy here who runs this shit, mm-hmm. and he says uh, this one's called Desolation, and it's his most extreme haunt yet. And he said nobody's even made it to the starting clock with the new show. Uh, with the new mental game, it's much more difficult. And because of that, no one's even started the clock to begin this experience. Man. Um. <laughs> I'll remind people of the rules here. you got to be 21 or older. You must have completed a full sports physical. Doctor's letter stating that you're physically and mentally cleared. Pass a background check. Uh, be screened v- via Facebook. Book, FaceTime, or phone. Proof of medical insurance you must have. 40-page waiver. And pass a portable drug test on the day of the show. Then, uh, nope, that is all. Like we can't do that. Can't um, do that. For anyone here. Um, but yeah. He said there's also a two-hour movie that you have to watch that is required to watch before you go in there. And, and by the way, I know we talked about this last year. It is so fascinating to me that you can still get away with this in today's world, I thought because for sure are, this guy would have been shut down. Because people are volunteering to do it. They see everything they need to do and they are saying yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. A crazy, level two crazy sex world. offender. A yeah. convicted sex offender. He sent it to me. Okay. James Con- sent it. Yeah. A convicted sex offender defined by U.S. law as a person who has been determined by the evidence reviewed in the sentencing court to have moderate risk of reoffending. So uh there's like level two, level three. I think level three is your your risk of reoffending is a lot more than a level two. Okay. So if it's something where it's like you had sex with a you know, your girlfriend who yeah. was sixteen or whatever, the yeah. re Huh? Pedo Pete. Um That's what they call it on the streets, shapes. <laughs> then you know, you're probably not going to reoffend in the same way. Sure. Whereas if you are, you know, touching kids and it's a compulsion and all of this. Then yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the, the levels, which I think is weird. So the level of reoffending is, is, what, is what creates the different, right? Okay. Do they think you're going to do it again? Level uh-huh. two, moderate. Level three, definite, right? Did you ever have sex with somebody past 18 when you were younger than 18? Yeah. How old? Like, what was the age gap? 22. How old were you? 16 or 17. Whoa. Whoa. Is that a real, uh, like a long relationship or just like a one-nighter? A um, little bit long-ish. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, for the age. Hmm. All right. Just curious. I don't know if you ever got in a fight and said, hey, man, I'm going to fucking tell people, you know? Oh, No. Not really. Not All right. Like that. But, yeah. yeah. Just wondering. Yeah. I'm wondering how that works. I never did it. Yeah. I mean, I think it mostly <clears throat> is the parents that I have. Yeah. Wait, what? I know people that have dealt with it, but it's mostly the parents that find out and get pissed. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. It's gotcha, not gotcha. you personally being like, yeah. you know, going through all that bullshit. Yeah. I, yeah. I never had to deal with that. So, yeah. I was always on the up and up. Good for you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, but I think, you know, it's different for men where you're, or boys, you know? Definitely. You're trying to, trying to get an older lady in there and uh, see, yeah, see what happens. Yeah, have you had sex with out. an older lady? Oh, yeah. Then? Yeah, yeah. a younger dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. But not like 16, obviously, or 15. Not 15. I was saying like 16 or 17. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I don't think I did, actually. Yeah. Sorry, so, I'm better than you. Yeah, you are. You are. Uh, congratulations, Shapes. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> we'll that wrap like it up weird, here, kids. It's like a weird ending. Not at all. Yeah, I just like feel weird. Why? 
don't know. It's your life, James. Let people live it. Let people understand um, it. Learn it, live it, love it. You know? Um, yeah. Me. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It's just like Frozen. It's just like Frozen. Get it out in the open. It's just like Frozen. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. We ended on a creepy note, which is creepy. It's nice. It's Halloween. Yeah. It's Halloween, dude. Yeah. We'll give yeah. you some real life frights. Thinking about Jabes and a 22-year-old. Yeah, year old. we'll do a, dude. um, we'll do a, we in overtime. Yeah, we're in overtime, God. Overtime. Overtime. Going into overtime. 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 Going into overtime. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do next time or for the Halloween show we'll do a uh, those the creepy messages that we did last time remember uh, which, uh, which where ones? it was like I would say like um, they're just a couple there's liners a train coming yeah, yeah 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 well there's the you know there hasn't been a train through here in 80 years <laughs> but um the like couple liners where it's like the dad is putting the kid to bed sure right and the kid's like, can you check under the bed for monsters? Yeah. And he checks under the bed and the kid is under there saying, help me. There's a monster on my bed, right? Yeah. We'll do those. Which one's the real kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, stuff like that where it's just a little cre- creep. Sure. Just a little creepy. We'll Maybe, definitely do that. And we'll, we'll dress up. Maybe I can be a 22-year-old and you can, you can pigtail it up and go 16. We Why can relive it. It's just like a weird relationship. We so can relive it. Like, but let's, we can relive it now, you know? I'm good. Pigtails. What were you wearing back? The pig, a lot of pigtails? No, I wasn't. Scrunchies? Wasn't pigtailing it okay. up. Uh, I think I was Converse. like dark. No, I had the colored hair, like darker hair. Oh, and I remember. Then like I remember that picture of you. Bright orange yes. and like was just a weirdo, dude. I remember just there's, I remember that weirdo. picture of you. We actually posted on our Instagram, on Ross Pedersen Revolution Instagram. Um, Which one? Of Me you? with colored hair? Yeah. You were hot. You were no, sexy at 16. No, 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 no. I was not. I was I'll like I'll repost a little, that. I know. I was a little, a little chubby. I was a little chubby. So what? You know? It was sexy. I get it. Yeah. Now I get that. Um, I remember that pic. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. We posted it. and There was, there was some other people who were like, God damn, James. All right. I yeah. don't know. It was different. You were different. playing ball. You were playing ball. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do that. 22 and 6. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's weird. our costumes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys? 22 don't year worry. old and a 16. Yeah. Don't worry. It's a level two. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Level two sex offen- offending? <laughs> In the what, neighborhood. What are you guys for Halloween? We're level. I'm, I'm a level two sex offender. She's Cause sixteen. I w- yeah, because I was <laughs> going to go as like a panda, right? A one, a onesie panda for the kids. But gosh, I think this one might be a little bit better because it's something. I love a costume that you have to explain in depth. That's always fun. Everybody loves that. Everyone loves. That. What are you? What are uh, you? Well, he's twenty two. 16 and we're but dun dun make them guess we're what are we right we're, almost like peanut butter and jelly i don't know we're level i'm a level two sex offender oh got it <laughs> oh my gosh how clever just like when i went to the a witch party the other night and someone was peanut butter and jelly and i'm like aren't you supposed to dress up as witches yeah what were they i don't know sandwich it'd be kind of like the same ah, thing right and i think people thinker. would kind of the light bulb would come on in the same way Whew, that is a real thinker james or we have a porch light <laughs> next to us that we have to turn off <laughs> level three is that a level three jamie that you have to turn off the porch light two and, two and three, three. so All we'll right. have to have that porch light too yeah what are you looking at all right just Looking costume up costumes, ideas. yeah. yeah. From, I, I I have a, a bunch of pictures from when I was twenty two, and uh, I was like, man, oh, yeah. how do I? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I'd have to dig That's up some Abercrombie, were. right? I'd have to really, you know, yeah. Oof. 
some baggy khakis, some yeah. Abercrombie. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm 22 year old. Okay, so now it's like you're 22 year old you. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm 16 year old me. Yeah, you. And we go back in time, and then we we do the whole level two sex offender. Yeah, I think people would love it. And everyone, totally kidding. <laughs> oh wait, you would have been 21 when I was. I know I'm a couple summers older than you. We don't we don't really know. Science doesn't really tell oh my that. Gosh, but, how funny uh, you were giving me all this shit, and then it would have been you. If I met you when I was 16 or well, 17. I was in college, Japes. I I'm just really, saying. I wasn't hanging out in high schools. So. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm, okay. So we, we, we could go back in time and figure it out. We'll just back in time. Yeah. Back in time. Listen to Huey Lewis all night. <laughs> it's Is just too damn loud. that song yeah. Bin it, bin it, bin it. Back in time. Uh... <laughs> What's even happening anymore? It's really fucking funny, by the way. I've, I've, I haven't laughed this hard in a long time. <laughs> because my dumb, humor dude. is so yeah, fucking you, yeah, dark. Yeah, because your like, humor is so dark that you're picturing yourself walking oh, around. Oh man, it is hard to make me laugh out loud like that, like a, like a fucking full John Elway horse mouth laugh like that. You know who can make you laugh like that? Who? Who? Who's one of the only people that can make you laugh like that? Who? Yourself. Well, you just did it to yourself. <laughs> I no. Yes, you well, just well, put on yeah, the costume and started laughing. Yes and no. Off so it. every this, it's funny you brought this up because everybody asks when they read the books and shit. They were like, "Dude, are you laughing out loud as you're writing it?" Yes, because I'm. Not, I don't have a chance to think about it. So that way, when I hear something, a lot of the times, probably ninety percent of the time, it's the first time I'm hearing it as well. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, James, you All know, right. level All two right. sex offender right. costume <laughs> from New Jersey, too. We're gonna have to be no, um, yeah, well, not me, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Georgia, obviously, but yeah, well, so you're gonna be Georgia law. We're gonna have to get together. I ha on we that. have pictures of each other at those ages, so I'd like to see an outfit at 16. That, what up, girl? That would have been a rough, what up, girl? A rough relationship. <laughs> Wouldn't happen. No, wouldn't, wouldn't have, have right? gone for you. No, no, you wouldn't have gone for me. Yes, I would have. I wasn't into. I never. Brad's I, I never had a. Checks. But here's the thing. I never had a type. So I would go. I would venture out to whatever. Man, it didn't matter. For real. <laughs> Tall, Good to know. short. Good to know. Different hair. Oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. huge tits, small tits, asses, no asses. Like it just Great. didn't. Cool. Uh, cool. You know. Cool. Life's a fucking thing. So uh, I think that's a Pinterest quote. Life's a thing. Life's a thing. Um, but yeah, no, I never discriminated, but you did, it sounds like. So good. it's good to know. Good to know. I think my pe personality would have shined through. James and you I would have won your heart. And I would have been your like, heart. you know what? He actually is a little bit of a rebel. Yeah. I bet he, I bet he cut someone. I bet he took a, took a bottle, smashed it on a table, and cut someone with it. You know? Yeah. Maybe what not. were you listening to? What music? Uh, then at twenty two. Uh huh. Were you a Dave? <sighs> yeah, heavy Dave Matthews. Yeah. Yeah, we would not have gotten along. Who, who were you listening to? Not so Dave you would have been sixteen, seventeen. Sixteen, seventeen. So I was like Portis Head. Unfortunately, Primus, but I was only pretending to like it because of the friends I was hanging out with. Beastie Boys. Oh yeah, same same. Yeah, I yeah, listen yeah. to all that shit. Yeah. I it, same. I guess it's the same as today. I listen to a bunch of different eclectic, weird music. So, yeah, I would have gotten down with that. Whatever you would have thrown on, I would have been into. Okay. I and that was that the beauty time, of we me. We were making fun of Dave Matthews, though. I think at that time. Because there was a phase where he just like. Blew up. Something. He just was. It was super dorky to like him. I think it was around that time. He's come back around, but I'm just saying there I, I think, was a I, time. I know what you're talking about. I think it was the, why would you say, like that song. That kind of thing. Just crashed, got too commercial. Was really mainstream, like, you know, Yeah. No, when things get mainstream, like, I get it. But, uh, yeah, I, I was one of those, like, hey, whatever you're listening to is fine. I didn't really give a shit. Because um, I, I still, and, and still to this day, I love all types of music across the board. So it's like, all right, cool. The only thing I can't like death metal is the, the one, like, where I was just like, <laughs> yeah, that one's hard. I can't. I can't. That one's hard. For yeah, because sure. there's no lyrics. There's no shit. Yeah. And it all kind of sounds similar. Same with fucking mariachi music. 
Wow. I wasn't dating a lot of Latinas. Um, right. I can't stand to hear that shit. Oof, but really Same song over and over again. And, oh, That's it the way I feel about death metal. Whole situation doesn't. It's the it? same way I feel about death metal. Same fucking song, dude. Both the, both genres to me. Same song, just a different variation of one thing. And you're like, eh, great. Fuck off. So yeah, let's do it. Level two, me and let's you. Let's do it. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, the overtime is over. Ross Patterson, the overtime is over. I'm gonna drink this whole bottle of Luke Belair. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>